Hello and welcome back to the European edition of YCS 200. I'm here with Matthew Bell. Hey Luke, and we're here in Wiv uh, we're here in Wivington. That's not where we are. We are That's here a in real Utrecht. place. That is a place. Oh, there you go. Way. But yeah. we're not there. We're in Utrecht. Yes. For are. the top 16. Yeah. So um, we've cut it all the way down to just 16 players left. Down from 2,356. Three yeah. Tournament. Yeah. You and can um, now. almost. All of the decks at this point are playing some kind of Sky Striker. Yeah, we expected that was going to be a lot of them, but it, is there any kind of alternate decks left in the top? I think that Ollie and uh, Tom will be able to give us the, the deck breakdown for that. Sure. But I can tell you that in this particular matchup, so it's Sky Striker Trickstar versus the pure Sky Striker variant. Ah, okay. Uh, it's actually favored to the Trickstar variant. No. Sorry, other way around. The pure variant by 5%. Ah, okay. The hybrid losing out by 5% on the advantage yeah. meter. Which is surprising, because when we went back into the previous format, the whole point of them adding the Trickstar cards was to have that advantage in the pure matchup. So it seems strange now that that has changed, kind of changed over. How many times did that matchup occur? Uh, 112 times. Okay, so quite a bit of data there to support that, but yeah. maybe we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, exactly. So let's take it over to our commentators, Oliver German and Tom Payne for the play-by-play. -play. Take it away, guys. Well, thank you very much, Luke and Matt. Um, it's been a very long day. It's been a very long weekend, in fact, which started in my case at 2 a.m. on Thursday night when I learned that my flight got cancelled. Somehow I made it to Utrecht, and it's been the same for a couple of other guys that are at this tournament. Um, among them was Thomas Rose, who just got kicked out in the last round, so we have only one more Burning Abyss remaining in the top 16 bracket. Uh, we can try and bring that bracket up for you guys, so you can basically get a, a full picture by yourself. Uh, let's try and I'd just like to mention when we showed the top 64 breakdown earlier, the other deck was Pendulum. Oh, okay. Just in case anyone was interested in what the other deck was, it was one Pendulum deck I had looked through. Right. So um, here are the players in the various locations. You see that um, one German player is. T oh, sorry, uh, I was about to say that one German is definitely going to end up in the semi finals, which is not true because there's Julio Valls or Julio Valls from Spain with Altegeist at the top left corner. He might. Um, yeah, put a bit of a, a stone in the way of the Germans in that part of the bracket. Let's just assume everybody is Sky Strike Pure with a couple of exceptions. Those exceptions are Din Kabui, he's the third on the left hand side playing Burning Abyss. Uh, then we got Sven Rebmann, who we're going to feature now, going up against Marcel Hansch. Um, because Sven Rebmann is playing Sky Strike Trickster. Then we got to move to the other side of the bracket and to Bowden Temnik, the guy that we featured at the very beginning of the tournament, still in the tournament. You guys know this, he's playing Altergeist. Might going be quite poetic to feature him at the end as well. Yeah, we, we, I'm happy to feature him at the very beginning and at the very end, and I think he's not going to complain about this. Uh, he's going up against Sahab Ali Shah from the UK, who's playing Sky Striker Trickster. And then we got... That's Nothing it. else. That Everything is it. else is pure striker. Yeah. Those are all the non Sky Striker Trickstar decks. So, well, quite the showing from this deck this weekend. It is. I mean, it had a big advantage in numbers going in, but I expect it's got the highest win rate regardless. Yeah. Uh, we got a very good cut um, in terms of countries from all over the world, not just Europe this time around, because we got a guy from Australia coming here and, and tearing the field apart. Um, so now we're going to look at the absolutely intense duel between Germany and Austria, Sven Rebmann against Marcel Hansch. So let's take you guys to the feature match table and get our game on. All right. All right, so we can't figure out who's going first yet because they, they haven't indicated it with the dice. Uh, but it looks like Marcel Hunch is going Marcel first. Is going first, considering he's put a card on the table, mm -hmm. and Marcel is with the with the pure strike. Oh, which deck is uh, the favourite in this matchup? Well, according to Matt and Luke, Sky Striker Pure has been winning out. And um, if you look at the deck list, is there something where you're like, okay, this is going to make the difference? Uh, so one thing that jumps out at me is the copies of deck lockdown in the side deck for Sven, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting card that saw some play. It's, it's, it's a card to, to know about, I think. I mean, it's not... It pops in and out. Uh, it used to be very popular with Constellar Pleiades because you could bounce it back to your hand and reuse it to get rid of the... Uh, well, the downside that it nukes itself after a couple of turns. Yeah. 
Uh, and that seems like quite a powerful card against Sky Strike because uh, it not only shuts off Engage, but it also shuts off uh, both effects of Area Zero, both the Summon Array from your deck effect and the um, adding cards from your deck to your hand effect. But other than that, the Trickster Sky Striker deck from Sven looks very similar to what Trickster Sky Striker decks used to look like before. Uh, but he has uh, sort of teched out to face the field of pure striker that he was probably expecting. So he's got three copies of Heavy Storm Duster in the main deck. Right. So that was one of the funniest cards you could play in uh, Trickster Sky Striker because one of the common plays was to set your most important cards mm -hmm. if they had a face down in order to play around the Trickster Reincarnation. Yes. So then if you had a card like Heavy Storm Duster or Twin Twisters, then you could activate that after your opponent set their most important cards and all of a sudden they don't have them anymore. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. So uh, here, as always, uh, Hand Trap is getting dropped in that case. It's Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. So important to have these hand traps early on. And Very important against the multi roll. That's basically what Ghost Ogre is there for. It's the only target, but it just comes up almost every game if you have the Ghost Ogre. Mm. Pot of Desires is a card that many Sky Striker players decided not to play this weekend. Um, so it's a bit of a strange one. It depends, I think, how long you think the game is going to go. So yeah. it gives you a stronger first turn, it gives you a stronger start. Uh, but the Sky Striker deck does like to run a few sort of tech one-offs um, that it likes to be able to search out of the deck. And there is a very real possibility that you can banish them with Pot of Desires. And you do feel even worse if your Pot of Desires is then hit with an Ash Blossom, as it was in this case. Okay. Um, but a lot of... Uh, this is the first player I've seen playing Pot of Desires in their Sky Striker deck this weekend. But it has obviously got a big upside, which is that it draws you two cards and puts a spell in your graveyard. All right. So, despite the two hand traps coming down from Sven, I think Marcel is still not going to be out of options. So he has got the Hornet drones to get his Sky Striker uh, Link engine going. So he'll still be able to use uh, Ray, uh, not Ray, the other one, Kagari. Cool. And then Kagari will be able to turn itself into a Shizuku, which will then be able to search and gauge in the end phase and have him set up for next turn. Sven, on the other hand, has drawn an engage straight away, but I don't think his deck makes quite as good use of the engage no, as it's, the it's, it's not, it's Sky not as good deck yet. does. This is the scapegoat, a card that we haven't seen the entire weekend, which is so hard to believe, considering that this card single-handedly turned games around, like, I don't know, three months ago or something it like did, that. It, it needs to fit into a specific type of deck. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Sky Striker Trickstar enjoyed using it quite a lot. It, it made very good use of the scapegoat, but other decks, not, not so, so much. much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think it's just a case of, I think any deck that makes good use of it, there's no reason not to run it, really. Yeah, but the only downside is the number of extra deck spaces that it requires yeah. in order to support it. But what we saw this weekend, um, there weren't that many decks, at least in the current field, that seem to make very good use of it. Yeah, I totally agreed. Okay. Um, it has got that other downside of having to wait a couple of turns in order to use it. So, I mean, it is chainable, and we see, but we do see the jamming waves uh, in Marcel's hand, so it, it's probably going to... It might not get met with the jamming waves because there might be other good targets. So here we see the, the impact. Well, I suppose there is, a, there is an ash in Marcel's hand, but in the old ban list, there's no way you would leave up a copy of Shizuku by itself against the Sky Strike Trickstar deck. Yeah. Because they would be fully uh, capable of OTKing you. So there was a very nice OTK yeah. if you had just uh, an engage and, uh, well, engage or drones and a copy, uh, access to a copy of Candina either through the field spell or just drawing the Candina. Right, yeah. You could set up the Firewall Lily Bell loop, mm -hmm. uh, but that did require the use of Nightmare Goblin. So that option is not available to Sven on this turn at least. So we're probably not going to see that way of winning for Sven Rebmann. Um, however, those two hand traps, they, they really um, threw a wrench in, in the whole uh, train that was going to Austria Town for Marcel Hunch. So he's currently he's in a good position, but not in a great position. Or is it one of those situations, if it's his turn again, and uh, Sven it's going to look like it's, he's in a good position, I think, once it gets around to his turn. Yeah. I'm so not sure Sven's going to do as many things as uh, Marcel did right. his turn. So he's sacrificing some of the consistency 
in a way, b uh, adding the Trickstar engine to the Sky Striker deck, what do you gain in return? You gain a lot more pressure on the opponent. Um, so Trickstar does way more damage, way faster than Sky Striker against an empty board. Sky Striker is often guilty of just doing 1500, mm. which is not really very many. When you have all these cards, all the cards in the world, and you do 1500 damage. That um, so doesn't sound convincing. No, it's not very convincing. So interesting that Marcel's chosen not to use the Ash on either the Engage or the Field Spell. W what is he waiting for then? That's a good question. Uh, some people like to hold the Ash on the Candina. Uh -huh. Because if Candina is the only card which allows you to search Reincarnation. Right. So they think, okay, so if you hold the Ash for that, there's no way they're going to have the Reincarnation. Mm -hmm. Or you can just hold the Ash all the way to the Reincarnation anyway. But then you've held it so long that they've got the benefit of the reincarnation being in the graveyard. Yeah. So if you ash the field spell and they just activate another one, then they'll be able to use that candy to search a reincarnation if mm. reincarnation is the card that you're worried about. I see. Um, or he might be holding it for a pot of desires. But I don't know if Sven is playing pot of desires. So generally speaking, would you also play it that way or would you have popped it earlier, dropped it earlier? I mean, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a gambit dropping it on the light stage because it, it just trades for another light stage in your hand if Sven happens to have one and if Sven had two light stages and uh, Marcel hadn't used the Ash then he's better off not using the Ash if Sven has two light stages but if he's got only the one light stage we can, we, we know from this yeah, situation we get perfect information. that it would have benefited Marcel way more to use the Ash yeah. on that first copy of light stage because now he's just got he's got two searches and if he just ashes the reincarnation, then he's got a uh, reincarnation in the graveyard and a uh, candina on the field that he otherwise just wouldn't have had if the ash had come right. down. I'm just looking over the names that we have here and trying to figure out how many guys we still have remaining in the field that won a YCS before or won something big before. And I'm pretty certain that Bowden Temnig is the only guy that has won a big event before. I think... Erikos Beck won the Greek National Championship. Oh, okay. Depends how big. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not familiar not enough with the, with the Greek Nationals or Greek Meta game in general. But I think that's pretty much it. There's definitely nobody um, from one of the most recent events that uh, won or came like to the finals or something like that. Well, we, we saw a lot of players, uh, good players, get kicked out in the top 64 and the top 32. Uh, we lost um, Marcello Barberi, we lost Thomas Rose. Um, we lost Raphael Nevin. So quite a few guys that uh, yeah. were favorites going into the top 64, made it this far, uh, got kicked out. So we might be seeing some new blood this weekend with a new champion that hasn't won anything before. Yeah, it, would, it would seem that way, given we've got 15 players and only, well, 16 players. 16 players and, and only one guy. that Only one guy who's won a seriously major tournament in Berlin. Yeah. yeah. So this is really a great start for Sven. He's got the Mind Crush, which is going to be able to clip the... Uh, Engage. Uh -huh. Again, like I, I feel like holding this Ash for as long as he has has cost him a little bit of tempo and board presence, but it is it is the safer play. Um, but in this case, it may have been worth taking the risk, considering you'd already seen three cards from Sven's hand, so he only has three left. So then you're saying, well, what do, what do you think? One of those, one of those, well, two of those three being ways to pick up a candy. Yeah. Um, but I guess we'll find out. So he's <laughs> not shotgunned the uh, Mind Crush. I'm no. pretty sure he knows that there's an Engage in his hand. So I don't know what else he wants to hit with the Engage. I hit with the Mind Crush than Engage. So what about the Ash Blossom? Didn't get dropped at all. You, you, you don't agree, right? I mean, I don't know what he's... It's going to do much less what than it would What else is he have. waiting for, yeah? Um, yeah, so I don't know why he's, he's held it so long, if I'm going to be honest. Okay. Well, that will be one of the list of uh, possible questions we could be asking after that match. Speaking of questions that are going to be asked after this match, this is when we're going to have the top eight player profiles once this round has concluded, which gives us a tiny little break for once today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rudy, who is taking care of the written coverage, is going to sit down with all of the eight remaining players in the field, uh, ask them a couple of questions, and you can find all of that and much, much more in the written coverage of this event. There's a link... Um, Wherever you're watching this below, there's a link below. Let's just say that.
So has he got three spells in his graveyard is an important question. And I think the answer to that is yes. Yes, uh, here is the... Oh, sorry. According to this, he's got one spell in the graveyard. Uh, sorry, you're talking about Marcel, right? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Marcel does have three. Marcel Terraform does have three spells court. in his graveyard, so he's going to get a bonus draw. Which is what you want. Yeah, you always want a little bonus. Even when you're ordering ice cream, you want a little bonus. So it's, it's the same with Yu-Gi-Oh cards and decks. It'll be interesting to see how Sven uses the interruption that he has. If he uses the interruption. If he uses it at all. I mean, <laughs> Marcel didn't use any of his. Yeah. So Maybe he thinks like, well, he didn't throw his hand trap. If he had one, because he doesn't know. Oh, speaking of which, two Ash Blossoms now in Marcel Hunch's hand. And um, So he's got the jamming waves, which I, I don't know when he's going to choose to use the jamming waves. Uh, considering he might wait until the um, until the mind well not the mind crush the reincarnation which he knows to be there has been activated because he doesn't want to hit the reincarnation. Does with he the know that the mind crush is there? He doesn't, right? He doesn't know the mind crush is there. No, the only thing he knows is the jamming wave. Right. Uh, not the the reincarnation. Right. So Sven is in a pretty good position, or at least in a reasonable position, because at first it looked like there was. Yeah, I don't think there was Sven should be unhappy. And now there is so the Mind Crush. he's choosing to use the Mind Crush on Engage, which is fair enough. And so Mind Crush on Engage, I suppose if he's already taken the first search off Engage, he, he probably was assuming that he wasn't going to be able to stop him picking up Engage again. So he might as well let mm. him do the first search until he shows him he's got the Mind Crush and then deny him the second search. Right. Makes some amount of sense. If you're assuming that he can get to Kagari and pick up the engage again, so then now, he, now he searches without knowing that he's not going to get the second search. Now Sven knows that there are two Ash Blossoms waiting for him. Uh, is that going to affect the way he's playing in any way? I don't think so. It kind of does because he just popped the scapegoat. <laughs> he's popped the scapegoat in I think response that's regardless of to the, the multi-roll. Yeah. Because now that the multi-roll has been triggered, um, he can't respond to something like a Jamming Waves or a Twin Twisters being activated on his face downs. So we have a look now to see if Marcel has included a, copies or included a copy of Hercules Base, and he has included a copy of Hercules Base. Hmm. And Hercules Base is traditionally one of the best answers to Scapegoat, because it allows you to attack twice and clear two of the tokens in one go and get a draw for each, which is you pretty know, good. Draw two, kill two of your opponent's cards. Yeah. Why not? Uh, but we do, don't know whether that was banished off the Pot of Desires and whether he can search it either. Yeah. Uh, w w one day we're going to have like some electronic system that pot immediately... Pot of Desires can. Yeah. Yeah. Just looks at the card and immediately goes, ping! This is this, and this card, got banished just now. So Sven is even going so far as to use all of his back rows. So that just showcases, I guess, the power of multi-roll. Forcing out... Well, it doesn't force them out, but it, it scares Sven into activating all of his face-down cards. Right. So now we see the Ash being used there. So, I mean, again, it is a question of um, whether you want to be safe or whether you want to possibly make the more impactful play. Because if he'd used the Ash before, then Sven wouldn't have had the Candina on the field or the Reincarnation in the graveyard. Right. Um, or if he'd used it on the Candina, there just wouldn't have been the Reincarnation in the graveyard. It just would have been in the deck. And the Reincarnation in the graveyard can now be used potentially to bring back a Candina for later. So how important is it for Marcel Hunch to wrap things up in this turn? Because Sven Rebmann has two copies of Engage waiting in his hand to be activated. Uh, they're not going to come down anytime soon. With all of those monsters. He does have field. a lot of monsters in his main monster zone yet. But it is definitely a good backup plan for Sven. Mm -hmm. He has only actually got the two targets in his deck. He's got he, so the drones are already in the graveyard, so he's got one Widow Anchor and one Afterburner. Yeah, that's one of the disadvantages when you go with the Trickstar Sky Striker version, I guess. You can afford to run less. So that was the hit. The hit drones to one affected the Trickstar Sky Striker deck a lot more than the Pure Sky Striker deck, mm -hmm. because the Pure Sky Striker deck had a lot of search targets, and the Trickstar Sky Striker deck had only the. Well, the it was it was very common to see Hornet drones at three. Yeah, and then uh, one or two other Sky Striker cards. But now you have to run some more. Right, so it seems like Marcel Hunch is ready to pass here. So this is really where the Trickstar deck excels, because if they're sort of going card for card, the only real difference is that Marcel is taking damage. Mm -hmm. And you can see, so Sven's not taking any damage, and Marcel took 
some hits last turn, and he's going to be taking 400 at the moment every time he activates a spell. But normally you have the Licorice on the field, which is doing 400 every time he yeah. adds a card from his deck to his hand. Yeah, so not ideal for Sven Rebmann in terms of damage output, but then again, a little bit is better than nothing, of course. A little course. bit is definitely better than nothing. Yeah, we're we'll going to see how he leverages his tokens against all of the face downs. I mean, the first thing to do normally is to use the light stage and turn one of the face downs off. So you have the option to pick something you know off the multi roll. Mm -hmm. Should we have a look at what the face downs are? We should do that, yes. We got one multi roll, Chemming Waves, Shark Cannon, Widow Anchor, and Engage. Basically, like all the different cards that mm -hmm. are being played in this deck. So he knows the Engage face down off multi roll. So he could have chosen that just for the sort of resource play. But if he wants to make the more aggressive play and shut down a possible defensive card, then he, that's what he's done. He's going to just pick one at random. Mm hmm. What if the random would have been uh, so the jamming engage? wave? Uh, it's not because he knows where it is. I know, but what if he would have rolled the die and the die said you need to put enga target engage? I don't think that would have been one of his selected options. Uh, he would just say, "Okay, dice reroll." Well, no, I think he would have randomly decided between the three face downs. He doesn't ah, know okay. where they are. All right, so uh, two tokens left the field. Two link monsters hit the field. Uh, something we have seen before. Where is he going to go next? I think he's, the next step is normally to make a Nightmare Phoenix and mm. activate its effect. And this almost always will get hit with the Widow Anchor because Phoenix is going to both threaten to destroy a card of Marcel's and more importantly draw a card, I think, is why you activate the Widow Anchor here. Yeah. But having said that, it is his only real interruption at this point in time. So right. he may choose to hold it. Okay. So let's see, is but the die going to come out again and <laughs> decide on the target? Oh, he's not, has he not even used the effect? It doesn't seem like it. It does seem odd when your opponent has five face downs that you don't want to kill any of them. So the... Shark Cannon is a better interrupt than you would normally think so in this situation. did he use the effect now or not? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, the Shark Cannon is quite a good interruption here because it stops the... Uh, it can banish something in the graveyard that Reincarnation would bring out. Attention to the main event. It's the end of the round. It's the end of the I don't know what the advantage the is in using not using the the nightmare phoenix the nightmare phoenix as yeah. opposed to the nightmare unicorn because if the phoenix resolves then he gets to draw a card no oh, it did hit the widow anchor this time around and the the the, the, the nightmare unicorn represents more link materials to be stolen than the phoenix so if the yeah. phoenix had been stolen then he would have not uh he still have the link rebel on the field to work with so i think i think it may have been a oh, did we miss something here i don't think so I don't see any reason why he couldn't have activated the Nightmare Phoenix. Now he is going to get to resolve a copy of Engage, and I think it will get him a draw. But there's still another Ash. Yep. So that's really, really not this what This is Sven what he saved the Ashes for. Indeed. Well, he was like, he drew the second Ash. He was basically like looking like a fortune teller at his glass ball and something. He was like, in the future, I'm going to need this card even more than I need it right now. Well, if he'd used the Ash last turn, even on the engage, then Sven would Don't ruin have it. Had that engage. We had a moment just now. Don't ruin it. Ah, sorry, that's my jam. It's ruining moments. I don't know whether the light stage has shut off the shark cannon or the jamming waves. So the reason that I'm being fed here, which is speculation, is that his hand was so important, like everything in his hand was so important that he didn't want to use the Nightmare Phoenix. But he used the Nightmare Unicorn. So yeah, I'm just telling you what I got for the Nightmare Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why you'd prefer to use the effect of Unicorn rather than Phoenix. But he, Phoenix he, was aware of, your he was aware of the Ash. Does that make a difference? That might make a difference. That's a, fair, that's a decent point. Uh, so it could have just been negated by Ash. But having said that, if he, if he wanted to resolve the Engage, then he doesn't mind mm. the Ash being used. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a bit of a puzzle. It's a puzzle. I mean, that is a fair point, is that the Ash can negate uh, the effect of a Nightmare Monster if it's coded. Yeah. It cannot negate the effect of a Nightmare Monster if it's not coded. <clears throat> so now Sven... This point is looking like the game has gone on for 
too long for the Trickstar player, really. Once the game goes back and forth a few times, yeah. you tend to sort of go, oh, hang on, how did the Sky Striker player end up with so many cards? Yeah, it's, it's no longer left. the the burn damage is no longer um, important enough because uh, Marcel Hunch has more than one life points, and as we know, that is enough to win a duel. And he's got infinite more cards, and that is a very exact mathematical term when you're staring down at least like five cards, and it's going to be a lot more in just a second. Oh yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to start to get out of control for. Uh, Marcel very fast. Well, depending on which way yeah, yeah. you're looking at it. But I think Sven is going to start to run out of cards very soon. Well, some would say he has already run out of cards. I mean... Yeah, he's got the one heavy Storm Duster, but realistically, with nothing to stop uh, the Shizuku picking up a copy of Engage, he's going to be drawing more cards, and that's enough by itself to out the board, because Engage can search a Widow Anchor, take the Trisbania or the... Um, what's his face? Unicorn. And make a Link 4. Yeah. So at the moment, it's looking quite well for Marcel Hunch from Austria. Uh, he must be happy about his options here. Oh, yeah, for sure. So Sven shotgunning the heavy storm duster on what he knows to be Engage. And I cannot recall if Marcel actually has another copy of Engage in his graveyard. Sorry. Do we think so? Uh, who has... Marcel. Marcel. Does he have an engage in his graveyard? Can bring that up. <laughs> it's a lot it's of a cards. It's a big graveyard. It's a big graveyard. But I don't see a single engage in there. Um, according to our app. Fair enough. Well, in that case, he'll have to fetch one out of the deck using Hayate if he if he direly needs to. But he's doing some calculations here, so he might be able to use the resources. We in his learned hand yesterday just to that's try and one the of the most anyway. effective ways to scare your opponent. You can also tell, like, he's writing down the life points, like, very, very tiny. And then when he's suddenly doing these calculations, he's using big numbers to show to his opponent something's going to happen very soon. And sometimes that can be enough to, to trigger your opponent, and he's going to shuffle up. So, yeah, we can see a Widow Anchor and a Shark Cannon for him. So that's already a lot of ways to summon some more monsters and that can pick up hornet is that hornet drones i think it was hornet drones he just picked up so between those three that's going to give him a load of link materials mm -hmm. and that it's probably enough to make a borrel sword which is usually how these things go no, we haven't seen it that often i think like one time sword. this weekend yeah borrel sword has been how almost every sky striker game ends yeah, at the end. At that's, the end. That's why I stopped paying attention. I'm like, okay, this is over anyway. <laughs> yeah, you think Borrel Sword, it's it's time to attack the game now. Although he might not even need the Borrel Sword at this point. But you said they only poke for 1-5. Indeed, but when you've got two Widow Anchors to take both of your opponent's monsters, if you pass, if you don't have any cards, then the Sky Striker deck can't really assemble that much damage, but they can take your cards and kill you with them. So that concludes the first game. Marcel Hunch with his pure version of the Sky Striker deck takes the win. Sven Rebmann with his trickster version of the Sky Striker archetype falling behind. And now he has only 16 minutes left on the clock to sport a comeback. If I'm going to be totally honest, I think they like having less time. <laughs> the trickster deck is very good at doing yeah. little bits of damage. So um, now the side decks are going to be playing a big, big role. Uh, what do you th see coming in here? So as I mentioned before, Deck Lockdown is a card that we've not seen, and I'm, I'm just guessing that it is there for Sky Striker, yeah. because it shuts off Engage, and it shuts off both effects of Area Zero, uh, which could be pretty nasty. Uh, and on the side of the pure Sky Striker, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> he might side evenly matched if he thinks he's going second, which uh -huh. is a fair assumption. Yep. Um, he twin. might choose to side Twin Twisters. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it, it, typically when you play against Trickstar Sky Striker, the back row is always chainable. So you can you can kill it with your back row removal, but if it's like a scapegoat, they just chain the scapegoat. Yeah. And it's good to be able to force out the scapegoat, Yeah. but it may be not at the expense of your cards. You kind of want to yeah. make them do it anyway. You maybe just scare them into doing it rather than... I mean, if you happen to go first and you can set a Twin Twisters, that could be good. But that's pretty great, yeah. That, that's I'm not sure like the one situation. That uh, Hans will be banking on going first. All right. But yeah, my money is on the deck lockdown coming in for Sven. 
and possibly the hey true need for when he goes second. So we're just being fed some information here that uh, Bowden Temnik won with Altergeist. That means that Spell Strike a Trickstar, the other version of Spell Strike a Trickstar. Sky Strike a Trickstar. Sky Strike a Trickstar, my god, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working with American time zones here, basically. I'm feeling like it's 10 p.m. So um, he's got kicked out. Um, that leaves us with yet another Altergeist player and yet another Burning Abyss player. And then we got the Sky Strike a Trickstar, which we are seeing here in our feature match. And those are the only decks that are not. Trickstar. The pure version no, of Trickstar, the Sky Striker. One. Sky yeah. Striker. It's, it's contagious. It is. Oh, he's also got Shared Rides. Were they in his main deck? They were in his main deck. So uh, Shared Ride is another very powerful card. And it's an even more powerful card for Trickstars because they put a lot more damage pressure on the board. So if you're running a Sky Striker Mirror, you might feel less upset about just passing. Yeah. Uh, but you can't really afford to do that against Trickstar. They will just put 8,000 damage on the board. Or even well, if they don't put 8,000 damage, if you take like 5,000 damage, then the burn effects start also, to become yeah. very intimidating. Both of these players are starting with an Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring in hand. Uh, not quite sure who's going first or who's going to be forced to go first in the case that Marcel is going to be forced to go first. But we, we assume that Sven Rebmann is going to go first here. Yeah, my guess is definitely for Sven. So also, his, his deck looks like he didn't take anything out that is really good at going first, obviously. And so he kicks things off with, of course, the Trickstar Light Stage. I think you're very happy at this point if you're Sven with this opening hand. Uh, the Shared Ride is something that slows the Sky Striker down, Sky Striker deck down mm -hmm. a lot. He does have the Ash Blossom, so if he's willing to hold the Ash Blossom, which we saw last game, he's willing to hold the Ash Blossom almost indefinitely, then it will be used on the Shared Ride eventually. But he's still got a good start and this is what we saw a lot of last format was where the sky striker has to do a lot of searching and stuff before it starts to take over the board yep so by that time you've taken some damage and often the sky striker's first turn setup is not is not the most threatening yeah. and then it's kind of on the next turn that they really start to take over so basically there's always a window for there's opportunity. Sort of this one window yeah for the trickster sky striker but they need to be aware of the fact that it's going to close very very soon and uh, now and the big question is... In the is case of, well, most decks, they need to do, like, all of the damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but against Trickstar, they need to do most of the 8,000 yeah. damage and then rely, possibly rely on the burn effects to end the game. All right, so they are basically forced to go big or go home. Exactly. Marcel Hunch did actually side into those Twin Twisters. Um, he did side the Twin Twisters. I mean, the Twin Twister is very powerful if you have this multi-roll. Yeah. So multi-roll is a very, very threatening card. Because it says, look, I could play Twin Twisters now and your back row now can't be chained. Yeah. Which is really mean. But I, I think that Sven Riebmann is seeing the writing on the wall here. Or is he? Do you think he's going to activate something in response? Um, we're going to wait and see. So he's, he's choosing now either to just use the back row that he would have used preemptively in yep. case of Twin Twister, or he might choose to respond with the Heavy Storm Duster in order to just stop the multi-roll from resolving, which is what he's doing. And the question is whether he's using it on just the multi-roll or the multi-roll and the Area Zero. So Heavy Storm Duster just being a pseudo-mystical space typhoon there as opposed to uh, its full full glory of destroying two. It's only destroying one, but he's chosen not to destroy the other one because he'd rather that Marcel didn't get a summon array. Which is... It depends whether you think Marcel's going to be able to trigger it himself. Yeah. Because if you think that he's going to be able to trigger it himself anyway and he's going to want to then you may as well just do it now and stop him from using the second effect. All right, so Pot of Desire is getting ashed. No surprise there. Uh, good news for Sven so far. Still still got a field. So, yeah, I assume the Shared Ride is being used in response to the field spell activation. Mm -hmm. And the ash was held. There's another ash. So turnabout is fair play. Both of these guys dropping the ash. And that is always the ideal hit, I think, off the field spell. Is the engage. And, but he's thinking about it. He is thinking about it. Is he seriously thinking about it or is he just claiming to be thinking about it? I don't the the only benefit of not taking the engage and then just using it to pick up the multi roll is that you take four hundred less damage, as far as I can tell. But yeah, that but is what he's doing. He doesn't seem to be 
that concerned about his life points. For the most part, it might be different this t this game. I don't think I've ever seen someone pass up and engage <laughs> off an area zero. So watch and learn. Watch he's, and learn. He's got to show you how it's done. I think he should put his face down card in the graveyard. Because I think that's what Area Zero does. Unless I missed something, but I'm pretty sure he should be putting his face down in the grave. Can we just point that out to the judges that the face down should be in the grave? And I think now the players are just checking whether he can use the second copy of multi-role, which as far as I'm aware, he can. Mm -hmm. um, so the text of multi-role says you can only gain this strange ability to not uh, have your spells responded to once per turn. Oh, sorry. Um, the chat just p points out he passed the engage because it would just be banished by reincarnation. Yeah, but I mean... <laughs> But I mean, Sven could choose to use the reincarnation anyway. So you're not saying that's uh, that's something that convinces you? It doesn't convince me at all. I mean, if you're saying I'm just going to pick something worse so my opponent doesn't get rid of it. I mean, Engage could search reincarnation. Sorry, Engage could search uh, multi-role. So if Sven was scared of the multi-role, he can activate the reincarnation in either either case. I mean, it means that the engage is now in the deck as opposed to banished, but I don't know why you wouldn't rather just force out the reincarnation. I don't know why you would deliberately take a worse card so your opponent doesn't respond to it mm. when your opponent can respond to the worst card anyway. It's, it's all a big mind game. It all is all a big mind game. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that card should definitely be in the graveyard, though, the face down card uh, for Marcel, because it was chosen for Area Zero, and Area Zero does send the card to the graveyard on yeah. the resolution. Um, yeah, we passed it on as much as we could, and uh, our judges are... I'm not sure what, what is happening They're exactly. They're checking whether you can use the the effect of multi-roll again, the one that targets a card and then makes your, uh, makes your spells unable to be responded to. Uh, and it says right. on, the, on the text of multi-roll that you can only gain this effect once per turn. Uh, and because it didn't resolve properly last time, it being a continuous spell, it has to be face up on the field when it resolves in order to have any effect. I think he is allowed to use it again, and that is what the judges decided as well. Right. But it is still bugging me that he has a face-down mystical space typhoon that should have been sent to the graveyard. Unless, unless I did something wrong. And um, another short piece of updates that I just received is that Jonas Koschel is going into the top eight, which is big news because he was undefeated. That's pretty good. So he is currently on a on a 15-0 run. That's quite something. And um, <laughs> doesn't seem to be able to be stopped this weekend. He's just going through it, tearing through the field. So we saw the Hayate attack directly and use its effect to send Sky Striker Widow Anchor from his deck to his graveyard. Again, he's neglecting to add Engage. So if he'd gone via Engage, he would have got some extra draws. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why he's not Sorry, no. doing this. Yeah, And I'm not sure how he sent the uh, Hayate to the graveyard either. Yeah, now, a lot of now things going over my head here. <laughs> they are. Um, uh, yeah, so the Hayati looked like it attacked directly. No, the, the, the judges are now guard. double checking all the effects with the area zero and everything. Um, another question oh, that just okay, popped up. Agreed. Agreed. So now that it has been resolved correctly, um, another How quick did question the from the judge. to the graveyard. That's my question. Okay. Is that the question from the? No, that wasn't the question. Um, the other thing that was asked: uh, if there's another undefeated player, no, there is not. Jonas Koschel is the only, only undefeated player in the entire tournament. Uh, regarding Someone the Hayate, the, I can try to double check Tell us that. why the Hayate is in the graveyard. Or why, or how was it sent to the graveyard? Um, we're going to find that out too. Because if it was just Link summoned, then... If it was just linked away, then it shouldn't have gone via Ray and it shouldn't have been the battle phase mm -hmm. for Sven anymore. Um, <laughs> battle phase two? <laughs> 
question mark. No, there is no battle phase two. Not not in this deck at least. Yeah, perhaps he switched into Valkyries. But I don't know what they would do at this point in the game if that was discovered. I mean, it would just mean that the Trickstar Lycris was still on the field and Sven had some more life points. Come on, guys. Don't hate us for not featuring Jonas Koschel. He... Ah, he, oh, Jesus. He's undefeated. That means we can feature him next round. We knew that he was going to win this yeah, round. Exactly. I mean, he did it 15 times or 14 times before we this round. We have a very complicated selection process, and it just didn't pick him. Yeah. Our die was never landing on Jonas Koschel. Exactly. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a die with 2,356 sides. And then we knock a couple off every round. Exactly, yeah. We're just going to, like, carve it into the die we need. All right. So we see... I didn't see what was added for the Shizuku. Uh, oh, it was set for the multi-role. Should we see what... So what cards he has on the field? Yeah, we got uh, both of these guys' cards on the field uh, here. Um, it's going to pop good. up very soon. Yeah, we're going to get there. So I think he knows one of them to be set from a multi-roll, which is the one that he's chosen. And the Ash now this time being used immediately on the Candida. He, uh, according to our app, Sven has drawn Heavy Storm Duster for turn, which isn't really going to allow him to make any very exciting plays this turn. Or in fact, no plays this turn. So again, it looks like as I've said before, once the Sky Striker deck has the advantage, has when we're the going, advantage, going it the, doesn't tend to give the it distance. Up. Yeah, it is the marathon runner going up against the sprinter, and for some reason nobody said, "Okay, you you reached the goal, sprinter," <laughs> after those 10 seconds uh, for 100 meters. So now, uh, slowly but steadily, Marcel Hunch is overtaking his opponent here, which is good news for Austria. We we haven't had an Austrian YCS winner in a while. And by in a while, I think I mean ever. Um, somebody's going to be mad at me after this comment. But I can't remember. I mean, uh, having said that, there's only three minutes left. So again, it's only in the case that Marcel is unaware of the, time. Is of the time. But mm. it might be that if he's not paying enough attention to the time, that Sven might steal a game that he was otherwise going to take. Uh, because if he doesn't enter his battle phase within three minutes, yeah. then he won't be able to do any damage. We in the have seen that exact same he thing. He will have taken some damage. In the round before, where it was like a race to get a race to battle phase, basically. And only if the player makes it to I mean, the battle to, phase. He has to time. know that that's what's going on. I don't yeah. know how, what awareness the players have of the time while well, they're in the Well, the thing is, like, if, if they know you see them indicating it by, by making gestures that are basically saying, speed up, speed up, please, speed up, please. It, it needs to be my turn very soon. Both of these guys are, I mean, they have it, been picking up the pace a tiny little bit the last few minutes. In um, the situation where he knows he has to do damage, I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't then have used the Twin Twisters in his opponent's end phase, just even though it's not maximum value because it's only on one card, mm -hmm. it just ensures that you're going to be able to force through some damage because we know that Sven's got no cards in his hand. So if you're destroying the set, then they're going to have no possible interruptions. Yeah. That's good to know. That's something that you really like. Oh, okay. It's like, great. Now I'm feeling good about now this. Now I'm feeling good. And then he can just make a big Link monster and attack over one of... Even if he'd hit the reincarnation, which does do something in the graveyard, it doesn't stop you attacking over your opponent. Yeah. Uh, for, just for some damage, enough to put yourself ahead on life points right. at the end of time. Um, oh, um, um, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, there's an Austrian YCS chairman. He he won with uh, Peter Gross, maybe. Uh, no, he's oh, quite a famous he's, one. He's also won. Yes, I, I, I think was... he may have won more than one. Yeah, he did. He did. And I also uh, Dong Lao, of course. Is that is that the name I got? Long so, Dao. Long Dao. <laughs> Dong Lao. Oh my. He's he's never gonna forget about that. He won I with. Just hope um, he's not listening. A Fifty something card. Deck Fifty thousand card. With mermaids. Mail, yeah. and that was before Grass's screener or that like, Grass looks screener. So I think it's all coming back now. It's just a little bit late. That. No, my God. I'm so sorry, Austria. I'm sorry. Dong uh, yeah, the chat has having fun now. That's good. Was not paying too much <laughs> attention to the time here. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. We're, we we need to get to battle what phase, was, guys. Was, he, yeah, he's used his battle phase, and he hasn't done enough damage. Oh, he has done enough damage. The life points keep updating. Yeah, they do. 
but he keeps searching cards. What's in his hand? An area zero and an engage. So he's chosen not to use the engage, so maybe that is a point to the life point. Yeah. <laughs> so it's time on the round in the mega regionals. It's going to be time on the round in the top 16, at least in our feature match very soon too. I think the rest of the field actually concluded their round uh, 15 minutes ago, something like that. Uh, so there's a very good chance that everybody that's still in the venue and isn't playing right now is watching this match. So and we see the Twin Twisters being used here. So again, if he just used it in the end phase, it would have been probably better value yeah. because now the... Now Sven Rebmann is clearing the changed. back side. Uh, he's ahead in life points. So he's ahead in life points, so I think this game is definitely going to end up... Well, if he manages to, to stall his turn a little bit enough, right? Oh, I mean, there's he... 20 seconds left. There's no way his turn is going to end within 20 seconds. Oh, who knows? Maybe he's going to be like a champion. Maybe he's just going to go pass. Yeah, now, pass. Right now. I don't want to attack now. I don't want to attack directly with my this Lily Bell for 800 damage. It's too much for my heart here. He's moving very fast. Yeah, he is. He wants Maybe to go to the he battle phase. The life battle phase? Are different to what they are. He did say battle phase, didn't he? No, he didn't. He just said pass. Um, so the game is going to end now in this phase, which is very likely the draw phase of Marcel Hunch. I don't know why he went so fast rather than just attack. Maybe he was forced, like, this sounds a bit weird, but maybe he was forced to play really fast. So um, nobody would say, hey, man, you're, you're stalling on purpose, you're slow playing. Yeah, I don't think it's too unreasonable to attack no, directly it, with your monster. No, ma maybe damage. it all happened to fa uh, so fast um, that uh, the, the guys that are operating the the apps didn't have time to enter the new life points. So, yeah, I mean, it starts to become... But he was ahead on life points, clearly. Yeah, 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 so he was ahead. I don't, know why he, I don't know in what situation you wouldn't want to attack to do even more damage and gave him further ahead on life points and give your opponent less time. I can't come up with anything, but then again, I'm the guy that just missed out a couple of guys' names. <laughs> Forgot about that Austrian player that won three YCS tournaments. A fair number of YCS uh, tournaments. Two back-to-back -back <laughs> in different formats. <laughs> it's also a really nice guy, by the way. Way. Oh yeah, he's great. Yeah, hi Peter. Um, <laughs> yeah, seen him for a while. Yeah, but he ke he keeps claiming he stopped playing the game and then he comes back. He was one of those guys who who brought Cosmo to Rimini when there were only like four Cosmo cards released. And I remember that. He he was that was one of his comebacks from a from a break, and uh, he ended up in the top eight of that tournament. So this is like. Oh, yeah. All you need to know about Peter Gross. He's one of the all-time greats. I didn't want to didn't want to throw him under the bus. I'm very sorry, Austria. I'm so sorry. I know we always we don't always get along with Germans and Austrians, but this is not one of those uh, occasions. I love you all, Austrians. Uh, please, so, please don't come at me. Traditionally, well, the Trickster Sky Striker deck, given the Trickster cards, yeah, would have a big advantage in the timeout. Yeah. Uh, but Sky Striker does have. Three is enough. Uh, I mean, Sven Rippmann can go first. The Hayati, which is a new tool to do a bit of extra damage. Um, but before before that, there was almost no way for them to do that much damage early on in the game. And in fact, this is looking like a very strong hand for Sven. So we've got an Engage, a Shared Ride, a Candina. Yeah, so, so people are asking, is it first damage? No, it is not. Uh, we are going to see four <laughs> turns. Four turns in oh, the timeout. Could well, you imagine first damage, Trickstar, summon Licorice, pass. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> would be a great idea. Don't, don't give them ideas, my friend. Don't give them ideas. So no, everybody gets two no. turns, um, yeah, unless turns somebody's each. life points unless are the zero. the game has ended normally. Stop interrupting me. Sorry. <laughs> so um, yeah, Trickstar goes first, and that's a big, big advantage here. Oh yeah, so it gives him a turn to set up the shared ride, as well as all of the other stuff that he's going to set up. So this is very reminiscent of the Trickstar Sky Striker openings of last format. And we have one Ash Blossom and Choya Spring and Marcel's hand. So Marcel has held it through the engage, which I think is fairly standard, mm -hmm. because the it's sort of generally assumed that the Sky Striker cards are not as important as the Trickstar cards. Um, so he may choose here because there's only going to be the one turn, well, it's only going to be a couple of turns not to try and get maximum value out of the Ash and take the risk of using Ash on straight on the Candina. Mm. Because this is the difference where you might be, you know, if the light stage is activated, which you would almost certainly search off the Candina, that's going to do a few hundred points of extra damage. So that is, it's more risky to do so, but in this case, it's, it's the sort of thing you're going to want to do. 
This is not the most explosive start that the Trickstar deck can have. It's basically the most explosive start in the Trickstar deck. Is it? Have. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm looking for the light stage, there's no light stage, for example. I mean, light stage is one of the extra pieces, but generally, Engage Candina are the two cards that you want in your opening hand. Those are the things that Trickstar Sky Striker does on its first turn. Okay. Um, and the Candina, although it doesn't do as much damage as Licorice, it is going to do some small points of damage. Yeah, so every little bit counts in this situation. Every little bit definitely counts, indeed. All right, so Marcel Hunch, we kept telling this. Um, if the game goes a little bit longer, if he sees a couple more turns, he's always going to be the favorite winning this. Yeah. This however, is a very different situation. Yeah. The game will however, not go those long turns. It's guaranteed to end on turn four. Yeah, or in, before. In that case, yes. Uh, no, actually, there is an Ash Blossom and Shoya Spring in Sven Rippmann's hand. I was about to say but no that interaction. That shared ride is going to be seriously <laughs> upsetting for Marcel. That shared ride is good, good news if you're rooting for Sven Rippmann's trick. If I'm honest, Sky I, I definitely agree with using the Ash on the Candina in the timeout situation. Mm -hmm. um, but here we see why he was not doing it. I mean, it's a, it's a risk. Yeah. And we see why he was not doing it because of just how much the shared ride is going to hurt him on this turn. Because what shared ride on terraforming is basically the best you can ask for. Yeah. Because almost all field spells searched These want days. to then search another card. Yeah. Like Area Zero, like Light Stage, Spiral Resort, Draconic Diagram, basically every field spell ever. So, and he does, of course, have the Cantina on the field, so that means extra burn, extra burn, little beep, bit by little bit. Little bit. So this would have been 400 per spell if he'd not ashed. So. I think may it may have been a sort of pick your poison kind of thing. Mm. He would have been taking a lot of damage either way. Well, he would have either been taking damage or giving Sven a lot of cards. And yeah. neither of those are really things you want to do. So, wow. Sven Rebman put himself in a really good position here. Uh, it was very close. He, like the last game, just uh, ending in time. He was ahead, now he's in the timeout. Both players are going to play two turns. He finished his first turn. Good opening, not the best opening. Oh, you said it's one of the better openings. Uh, I would say it's one of the better openings. One of yeah. the better openings, especially in the timeout here. And now his opponent, Marcel Hunch, is trying to assemble the pieces, but assembling the pieces is going to cost him life points thanks to that Trickster Candina. And it's ticking down his life points bit by bit. Now, where's he going to go here? What's his end goal? What's his end goal? Uh, I mean, currently, he's going to summon a, a ray off of the Area Zero. Now the Ash comes down. So the Ash is just going to negate that. Um, I mean, maybe a bit preemptive, mm -hmm. but Area Zero is one of the few ways that Sky Striker initially have to actually put some monsters, summon a few monsters, like summon more than one. So yeah. the usual plan is just normal summon ray. Yeah. Uh, and Area Zero is one of the few cards at the beginning of the game that can get an extra monster on the field. Um, so that's probably why he chose to ash it. I mean, holding your resources in a game that only lasts four turns <laughs> is probably, you don't you don't need maximum value, you need maximum sort of impact yeah. right now. Yeah. So I can see why you would choose to do that. But it does feel a bit sad when you use an ash and then the next card your opponent plays. So now he's um, targeting the Trickster Reincarnation, which is not, not going to get chained. That's interesting. Um, oh, he can't chain it. Seems fair enough. Yeah. There was a multi-roll. So cool. actually, to me, that does make perfect sense that he used the Ash. Because he wasn't going to be able to use yeah. Ash Engage or Desires anyway. So Sven was making an even better play than I was talking about. So Marcel has got rid of a little bit of the field. Um, but the reincarnation can bring Kanina back, of course. Um, he knows that, obviously. There's, there's no he question does. about it. So now he's using the Widow Anchor and I'm then... I'm wondering if he's actually going to be able to do any damage. Uh, because Reincarnation is in the graveyard, and so when the Shizuku attacks... Well, I suppose the he's, he can first of all do some Link Summons, mm -hmm. which is better. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's quite good, that. It's a thing. Normally, Widow Anchor, you expect to take... Uh, you expect it... When you take your opponent's monsters not in the mirror match, why did he not? Oh, that's an interesting decision. So he chose not to add anything back from his graveyard because he didn't want to give his opponent an extra draw off shared ride. But that is at the expense of adding the Widow Anchor mm. and stealing the Candina that came back 
of reincarnation and doing some 2,000 damage or something. So Sven Redman was playing defense, like 100% defense in that turn. Didn't take any damage. Um, however, Marcel Hunch is gonna have a second turn unless Sven Redman is gonna be able to dish out 7,200 damage on his following turn. It doesn't look like it yet. It doesn't does look it? Like, I mean, he has got two copies of Engage. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how many spells he has in his graveyard. He's definitely got the one Hornet Drones. Yes, yeah, one Hor Hornet Drones as a. a that's it. A Shed Ride. Shed Ooh, Ride, Hornet Drones. That's a really horrible draw. That's yeah. a really horrible draw, that Widow Anchor. Um, I mean, and he's. Yeah. The two copies of Engage. So Widow Anchor has been drawn for Is the shared out of ride in the now? end phase. So yeah, so he's got two of them. So he had two targets and that was one of them. Yeah, all right. So um, I mean, worse than that, it's not just that it's a dead card, but he when, if he'd searched it with the Engage, he would have got a draw to go with that. Yeah. So it's it's a minus two. <laughs> Drawing that card is a minus so two. He shouldn't have activated uh, he shouldn't shared ride. He shouldn't have activated ride. the shared ride. No, that was definitely <laughs> his mistake. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a good card, Widow Anchor, but in this situation, not at all what you wanted to draw. Uh, speaking of Shared Ride, uh, Marcel Hunch has a Shared Ride face down now. Um, and he, yeah, so much for that. If I'm completely honest, I'm not sure Sven cares. Uh, right. He's just going to do as much think, damage yeah. as he can. He's um, in a situation where he needs to dish out as much damage and nothing changed. If his opponent is drawing a million cards or not, nothing exactly. changes. Exactly. In fact, he might be able to do more damage by making his opponent draw cards when he has a little Oh, okay, yeah, good point, good point. But I mean, it will give Marcel more tools to do damage with. But Sky Striker, once they have enough cards, it, most of their tools are once per turn. Well, not all of them, but the yeah. Area Zero to Summon Array is once per turn, uh, which is, I mean, there are, it has some tools, uh, but I think at this point he's probably just not going to care. Yeah. So how how much distance can he put between himself and Marcel Hunch? Uh, how much life points are you going to be able to take out here? So I think he knows the two. Can we can we bring up the two sets? Yes. We got. Uh, so I think. Jamming waves, Widow Anchor. Yeah. So he knows and one of the sets was Widow Anchor. And there's a point so of desires. I think. Doing anything. Yeah. So he's got the decision now as to whether he takes the 50-50 shot on the cards that were set by the multi-roll hope he gets the Widow Anchor, which will allow him to push through way more damage than he would otherwise be able to push through this turn. Or he could simply accept the fact that he's going to try and play through one Widow Anchor and see how much damage he can do uh, and is set him, give himself no unknowns. Mm. Do, do you agree with the reincarnation on the last turn? He didn't use the reincarnation. No, no to, to bring back a monster. Oh, um, to block the attack? Yes, I think so. Okay. Saving yourself. Uh, it's not like you, you got more use time. out of it now. I I don't see that. Okay. So we don't know whether Widow Anchor was hit um, for Sven. So Sven hit one of two cards, and we don't have any laser vision to see <laughs> which which card that was, unless uh, maybe Marcel lifted it up enough for us to see it. But it turns out that it was the jamming waves. Yeah. Okay. So here we see the nice play of chaining Widow Anchor to your opponent's Widow Anchor to negate the effect of your monster before their Widow Anchor can negate its effects. And then it cannot be stolen. And then it cannot be stolen because yeah. Widow Anchor must negate the effect of a monster in and order to steal it. Now he got the Widow Anchor out of the way. He has got the Widow Anchor out of the way. But he doesn't have his own anymore. But I think he would have just rather that it wasn't there in the mm. first place. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's not how the game works. That is not how the game works. It's not, that's not how the force works. A ray. No, there is no ray in Marcel's graveyard, so this afterburner is going to be more impactful than it otherwise would. Mm -hmm. And he's got the option to destroy the multi-roll or take a gambit and destroy the face-down card. Um, this is a, a genuinely quite tough decision, and unfortunately... Took out the pot. He's going to know it's the... Well, it's not the wrong decision, to be fair, because normally the Sky Striker deck would not consider using a second copy of Pot and Desires because you can't afford to banish 20 cards in a long game. Yeah. However, it's not going to be a long game. He knows he's just going to try and win the game next yeah. turn, so he's probably, he probably would have activated it next but turn, to be fair. He, he has to win the game the next turn. Uh, we has to do damage the next yeah. turn, indeed. So, yeah. so Sven currently ahead on 800 life points. Um, and yeah, I think he's just deciding whether he's going to summon the Lily Bell and attack, or set the Lily Bell. 
He's got a Widow Anchor. That's gonna allow him to prevent some damage next turn, very uh, likely. He doesn't have a Widow Anchor, that's an Engage. That Engage is, is completely useless. Doesn't he also hold an Engage according to... No, according to he the app. The he just anchor. used the yeah, Widow Anchor. Okay, sorry. Shouldn't believe the app, I should just Shouldn't trust believe. my eyes. No, yeah. now it's gone. It's He's like somebody was listening. Ah. What target has he got? Did he just search a ray? He's got a ray in his deck. I didn't realize he had a ray in his deck. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty handy. I was only looking that at his spells. Everything because that now does change he gets everything. to draw from the engage. Is that a mind crush? That is a mind crush. That was a big turnaround that I wasn't expecting. Even though I had his deck list in front of me, I just the idea of uh, tricks to sky strike because normally they want <laughs> to use the normal summon for Candina. Yeah, he doesn't. But he likes like, attacking yeah, with whatever. Ray. Oh wow! That is a big <laughs> That's a swing. big, big swing. Yeah. Suddenly, Sven Rebman with a sneaky card sneak onto his deck list in the top 60. Yeah, no, I'm just, just making I don't know when stuff. he put that there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's been there all the time. In around. between when I looked at his deck list a few minutes ago, and then when I look at it now, it's a here. ray has appeared on his deck list. Yeah, a wild ray appeared, and that suddenly can make a big, big difference. I mean, 5, that ray's going to swing for 3,000 damage. Yeah, five seven and four Marcel Hunter. And pick up a widow moment. anchor from his graveyard. And that widow anchor. And it's going to give him a sky striker monster, which, if destroyed or sent to the graveyard by the effect of either of Marcel's card effects, will then be able to bring back the ray for further defense. Attention right. to yeah. So, so between all it, of those it things, turned the tides. That's done a lot of things. So that. And how choice. important is that? I mean, he also got the mind crush. I can totally see the mind crush playing a bigger role here. Uh, if, if his opponent gets to search something, he's just going to rip it off his hand. Um, exactly, yeah. Foil that plan on top. So suddenly Sven Rebman is sitting in a really, really good position with that one card. I would say he's still fairly nervous. I would still he be is. fairly nervous I'm, if I were him. I'm certain that both of these but guys... having that one card in his deck. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm certain that he's just going to be like, I'm so happy that I put this on my deck list. So he sets those two cards. It's a Widow Anchor, it's a Mind Crush. Both of these cards really, really good right now. Marcel Hunch lost almost half of his life points, now enters his very last turn and he needs to deal at least 3,800. Shall we check if there's any uh, Sky Striker spells for multi-roll to bring back in Marcel's graveyard? So I don't recall. Here we there see are. the Area oh, there's Zero. there's an Area Zero. And that's it. So he could bring back the Area Zero if he wanted to. Go back to his hand. He needs a good draw. And I guess that's what he's doing. Yeah, I don't see why not. So it gives you a free thing just to hit immediately off the multi roll. Which would, in theory, allow Sven to activate the Mind Crush, but that's not the, ta uh, not the target. Oh, sorry, it goes to the field. Yeah, it goes to the yeah, field. Yeah, it goes to the field. Forget everything I'm about to say. So this is it, the last Already turn. done. Yep. Mars and Hunch. <laughs> yeah, they're just getting rid of the dice. They're like, we're not going to need this dice anymore. Just time. It's only time that matters. It's got an Ash Blossom. Not going to be very relevant here, is it? Yeah. Called uh, by the grave. Gone ahead and activated the... Uh, not going to be relevant here. He's got an Engage, Hercules by the grave base. would have been relevant if Sven had a hand trap, so he'll probably keep it in hand yeah, for that purpose. Like I said, not here. Uh, he could also banish Frey from the graveyard, which could be relevant. All right, so he gets to search something, add something to his hand. Now there is an opportunity for Sven Rebman to pop the Mind Crush. Uh, there is not. Why not? Because if he calls uh, Widow Anchor, Widow Anchor is a quick play spell. It could be chained. Okay, so it wouldn't be a good opportunity, but it would be an opportunity to see the hand of his opponent. Granted, but he could have done that in the standby <laughs> phase if he really wanted to. <laughs> ah! There's always an opportunity to activate Mind Crush. If you have a card in hand. If you have a card in hand. I think your opponent has to have one too. Uh, yeah. Alright, so he's going for something else. What is his game plan here? What is his game plan? I assume he's going to proc the multi-roll and hope his opponent activates both face downs. Because then it makes life a lot easier. Because mm. being able to plan when your opponent doesn't uh, have any responses is yeah. much easier than being able to plan when your opponent does have a response. Of course. He knows there's a Widow Anchor face down. He doesn't know what the other card is. Yeah. I think, as far as he's concerned, probably if the other card is Scapegoat, he's going to really struggle to get yeah, to Yeah, I, I don't see him doing 3-8 or more when there's a Scapegoat. So, he's probably going to be more happy than sad if any of his cards get mind crushed. <laughs> yeah, just because it's the lesser of two evils. And Sven's preempting the Mind Crush. I'm not sure what he's Mind Crushing. Maybe he is 
Is mine crushing the weakest? Yeah, can. See, I told you it's the pro play. No. Okay. And it didn't it not it didn't get he, activated. He didn't chain it. Did did he have See, three spells in his graveyard? I told you this is the correct way. You just confuse the opponent. Play the Mind Crush. How many cards? If, were there enough spells in his graveyard? The, according to the app, monster? no. no. Oh, sorry, Terraforming, Port of Desires, Shared Right. Oh, loads. So, I mean, he might not want to activate the Widow Anchor if he was only going to negate the effect and not steal. Yeah. But if he was going to steal it, I'm I'm not sure why he did that, and I'm not sure why it wasn't chained. Well, I'm quite proud of myself for calling that. Preemptively, I should I I'm should start sure my should fortune teller career. No, I should be. I'm not sure you should be. This, these are the hard things to call in advance. You, you're only uh, calling the good plays in advance. <laughs> I'm also calling the bad plays in advance. <laughs> this is like the the real skill of a real fortune teller, my friend. I suppose that is true. I'm only calling the things that are well not ob obvious but logical. <laughs> Maybe at least one step rather than four or five steps ahead. <laughs> to not chain that and not make your opponent discard a card from their hand um, and not take your opponent's Is Kagari. That he couldn't respond because of multi role? Is that correct? Um, I mean, no. No. Marcel's, you can just chain to it. It's Marcel's multi role yeah. that would prevent Sven from responding to his spell cards. Maybe he just wanted to get a new one. I mean, he could have had an. He still would have been able to get a new one. <laughs> But in a different way. No, it's the same way. <laughs> I suppose he wouldn't have been able to activate any more spells for a second while he's had the Kagari on his field. He would have had to link summon with the Kagari first. There's a lot of pressure on Marcel Hunt right now. Uh, That's cut him, fair enough. Cut him some slack. I'll cut him some slack. Um, he must have some sort of plan to dish out that much damage. I mean, I think he still is probably fairly confident he's going to win the game here. You think so? Uh, well, he can activate... And what's he got in his hand? Has He's he got, got any tools to win? Ash Blossom, Caught by the Grave, Widow Anchor, Shark Cannon. And he's gone engage. And engage. Yeah, I would say he has more than enough tools to win the game. You think he can deal that much damage? Uh, so, yeah, he's going to use Afterburner. And when he activates Afterburner, there will be now no longer any opportunity for. So, Afterburner. Well, he could get Afterburner. Let's see. Uh, he's going to have to do some calculations. So if he if he can take something like Afterburner, he can just force out the Widow Anchor. Mm. And then he no longer has to worry about it. But he's decided he's going to do something else. So using the multi-roll will uh, lower the effectiveness of the Widow Anchor because it will mean Sven can't chain his own Widow Anchor to it, uh, which would be a good way of playing around. So the new theory is that he would have put the monster that he gets with the Widow Anchor in his main monster zones, which means he cannot activate Engage. What yeah, do you think about this just, theory? He could have just up, well, switched out his Kagari for uh, Shizuku in his extra monster zone. So you're still not happy with I'm my... No, I'm definitely not happy with I'm that. giving yeah. you so many good explanations and you're just I discarding them all. I don't think that's a good explanation. I think it's uh, he didn't realize he could do uh, that. Twitch chat, did you hear that? Tom Payne hates you. I hate. No, well, I didn't say that. That's exactly what you just expressed. I just said. It just took I a few more words. I don't think that's a good explanation. Yeah, you just lost half of your fan base here. All of them. <laughs> it's like, like a nuclear explosion in the middle of your fan base. All right. So still, Marcel Hansch needs to go to places. Needs to go to town. This as is quite Luke amusing. Likes to call you get it. this silly situation when after time has been called. They're playing longer than before time has been called. You don't have any pressure on you to go faster. Yeah, you cannot take forever. I mean, activating Foolish Burial Goods doesn't really serve any purpose uh, for him, other than possibly making a Kagari on his field 200 attack points stronger. And he's not going to draw any cards this second. So, I'm not, yeah, doing that now is just kind of eh. <laughs> it might make one of his monsters 200 points stronger. So it's interesting to see where he goes with this. He only has to play around the Widow Anchor, and he knows that's a Widow Anchor. Yeah. He's got uh, Caught by the Grave in hand, so he doesn't have to think about any possible hand traps, mm. except for a possible Cyframe Gear Gamma, I guess. If yeah, you thought your opponent was playing that. You would have played point, differently. I think you would lose to the Gamma anyway, because it's something that negates a monster effect and then summons two further monsters. Yeah. So I'm not sure you can really afford to think about that unless you're being very... 
And very thoughtful. I wouldn't want to sit in Sven Riebmann's place. He's just watching this at the moment. Not much yeah, he, he can do. Yeah, he must be very tense. I mean, he has got the Widow Anchor, so he has to choose yeah. when he's going to use the Widow Anchor. He's like, okay. So I'm interested to see what Marcel... I mean, I, I feel like Marcel has enough tools at his disposal to be able to effectively play around the Widow Anchor. Mm -hmm. um, so he could have searched Afterburner, used Afterburner. So if he'd chained the Widow Anchor in the first instance, then uh, Sven's card would have been discarded for Mind Crush because he wouldn't have had a Widow Anchor in his hand. Yeah. Then he would no longer have to worry about the... Uh, he could have used the Call by the Grave to deal with the Ray. So he could have activated Afterburner, searched Afterburner off Engage, uh, activated Afterburner. Either uh, would have forced Sven to activate the Widow Anchor immediately or just let it die to the Afterburner on Kagari and then destroy the Widow Anchor and then all of a sudden there are no cards left, uh, and then called by the grave on the ray, and now all of a sudden Sven has absolutely nothing. So yeah. then all he has to do is assemble the requisite damage, which I think could just be done by normal summoning ray, attacking with ray, and then tributing it off for Gagari. So now Marcel Hunch has two copies of Widow Anchor, he just got one back. Um, so between all of those things, I think he could have just... I think that line would have won him the game. Mm. But that line is no longer available to him because he didn't chain the Widow Anchor. It, yeah, it took a wrong turn here. So he could have chained the Widow Anchor just to negate the effect and leave Kagari on his opponent's side of the field. <laughs> yeah. And then just force, uh, force Sven to discard a card. So even if he decided that you didn't want the monster... Oh, he also could have used Shark Cannon to banish Ray rather than Called by the Grave. So the fact that his opponent still got card in hand is basically irrelevant. Yeah. Sven Riemann just double-checking the Shark Cannon. It's not the card you see every pl every uh, turn. It's not every turn, but it is quite a popular card. Yeah, or every round, yeah. <laughs> I think it's in most of the deck lists, because yeah. it's a very helpful card in the Sky Striker mirror match. So wh when is Sven Riemann going to use his own Widow Anchor here? I think ideally he would wait until the battle phase, but mm -hmm. other than that, he's going to wait until it's just forced to be used. But if, so if, if like Marcel gives him an option to wait until the battle phase, something went yeah. very so wrong. The, if you have the Widow Anchor face down during the battle phase, it becomes very difficult for your opponent to damage you because they can pick your monster with the highest attack and take control of it. And with the second copy of Widow Anchor that Marcel Hunch has, he can, of course, uh, play around the opponent's Widow Anchor by just negating his own monster's effect. Assuming he has no uh, monsters in his main monster zone. Oh, yes, yes. That's important, actually, yeah, because so he has to keep in mind at the moment that doesn't look very likely. Yeah, he has to keep in mind as well that the Kagari that he's taken can't attack. And in fact, we should stop the judges here because he wasn't... Oh, no, that's wrong. The Kagari was taken by Widow Anchor, so it can attack you. Sorry, I thought he summoned it off Shark Cannon, but he didn't no, summon it off Shark no, no. Cannon. The Candy Nose summoned off Shark Cannon. <sighs> Oof. This, uh, this match is taking forever. How is this possible? We're in timeout, I thought. I'm not sure where he's going with this at this point. I think he may have burned too many options. I'm not sure what the Call by the Grave is achieving when he does this. Call by the Grave is banishing Ray. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he's done that, really. <laughs> I don't know what that does. Maybe it does something. It, it adds another spell to your graveyard. Yep. All right, so still Marcel Hunch's turn. If I'm honest now, I, I think Marcel may have used up too many of his resources in order to effectively play around that Widow Anchor. So maybe the Widow Anchor was just there to scare him into making these plays that might not allow him to do enough damage. Yeah, I can't see him doing enough damage right now with the cards he has in his hand. But was there a place where where he took a wrong turn, so to speak? I think not chaining the Widow Anchor when Mind Crush was activated on it was a mistake, for yeah. sure. Sven Riemann is like sitting on the edge of his he's seat. He's just like, yeah, I think he's probably just slowly coming around to the conclusion that his opponent can't do anything and is just going to feel very sad if it turns out that his opponent can do anything. Yeah. Um, at, at, one, at what point is Marcel Hunch going to come to the conclusion that he might not be able to attack for game here or, or do enough damage? I think probably already come to that conclusion. <laughs> so he's saying he's trolling us? I don't think he's trolling, but I think you just keep checking. I think that's probably the thought in his head at the moment is that it's not going to work. Right. 
but he's trying I to. I mean, he's going to just keep going and see. Yeah, he doesn't I mean, want his to... opponent might not use Widow Anchor. There it um, is. But there it is. So what's he going to take? Uh, probably the High Arty, just in case. Um, I mean, it's got lower attack, but if you take the high RT, then your opponent can't use any. I just thought Labyrinth Wall would be a good card to take right now. Yeah, your opponent <laughs> won't be able to use any uh, Sky Striker cards. Exactly. Afterwards. <laughs> All right. But the the Phoenix is a perfect. I think either of them. I don't. I don't see what happens. I mean, even if he didn't take either of them. Yeah. Marcel wouldn't have enough damage on the table to attack. And the game. that is it. Yeah. Now Marcel Hunch comes to the conclusion. He cannot break the board. He cannot do enough damage, and that means that Sven Rebmann is going to win this match and advance to the top eight. Oof, what a match, what a thriller. <laughs> the judges me like, hey, come on, sign this, guys. Uh, let's talk about it a tiny little bit in our post-match analysis. This is what uh, two very tired commentators look like after a very, very long match. <laughs> Uh, we just concluded the top 16 with yet another thriller. We go back to back into the overtime. Um, we can just see that everybody's like on the edge of their seats. Everybody's like, the adrenaline is basically... Yeah, that was totally nuts. I didn't know who was going to win that game. <laughs> and my opinion of who was going to win that game changed significantly when it turned out that Sven had a ray in his deck. Yeah, your, your fortune teller skills, they need some, some working. They do. That, yeah. that, that, yesterday that they were, by me. They, yesterday they were they pretty were on point. Yeah. Very much on point and on par, yeah. So, guys, um, quickly recap. We have a whole lot of Sky Striker Pure in the top 16 now. We had a couple of different decks. Sven Rebmann with his Trickster Sky Striker still in. Uh, there was one Burning Abyss player, not 100% sure if he advanced. Um, and there's one player, Jonas Koschel, with Sky Striker Pure. Nah. Who nah. is undefeated? <laughs> Oops, did I say that out loud? Um, who might be our next feature match? I cannot guarantee that because I think it's already got picked because apparently everybody else has finished their round, which means we can't even go to Luke and Matt. Uh, we're going to take a very quick break. Uh, top eight profiles are going to be uh, prepared in the meantime. You can then find those very soon in the written coverage. We're going to try and grab a quick snack if time allows it. And then we're going to be back with the top eight of Weiss's Udrich. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be back as soon as possible.